Section 6.1b is about solving inequalities using subtraction. In the last video we learned about the, the, the addition property of inequalities, now we're doing the subtraction property. It simply means that when you subtract something from both sides of an inequality, it stays the same. We'll start with an example here. Uh, I have an R where a 19 is connected with addition, so to eliminate that I subtract 19. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So we end up here with R greater than or equal to 16 minus 19 is negative 3. Now I could write the answer in set builder notation, but I told you in the last video that we probably wouldn't use that. So I'm not going to write my answers from now on in set builder notation. This is fine for a solution. Next example, Q plus 23, which means I'll subtract 23 from both sides. So we end up with Q is less than 14 minus 23 is negative 9. So Q is less than negative 9. Now we're going to get into a few examples that have some extra steps involved in them. If you notice, this inequality has variables, but there's variables that are on both sides. This is one that we haven't seen yet with inequalities, but when we had equations, what we used to always do is take the smaller coefficient and move it. So I'm going to take this 5p and I'm going to subtract 5p. Well, 5p minus 5p is 0, so you end up canceling that off. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we'll end up with 7 is greater than 6p minus 5p is 1p. The solution has to be written with the p on the left. So I'm going to flip the sign here. So my solution is p is less than 7. We're also asked to graph that. So I'm going to go over here to 7. Now because it says less than and not less than or equal to, I'm going to put an open circle. And I'm going to shade to the left. So that is what the graph looks like. Next one down here, again, letters on both sides. I like to move the smaller coefficient, so I'm going to subtract 12n. Now, some people might look at this minus here and say, well, why didn't you add the 12n? The answer is because the 12 is positive, and 12 minus 12 is 0. And that's what you want. You want to cancel that off. So we end up with negative 4 is less than or equal to n. Switching the sides, and then you also have to reverse the symbol there. So n is greater than or equal to negative 4. We'll graph that now. Here's a 0. Call this negative 4. Greater than or equal to, so my circle will be filled in. And my shading to the right to show that I want all the numbers that are bigger than that or greater than that. You're going to be asked to take some sentences and translate those into inequalities as well. And this table will help you. These are words and phrases that are used to represent inequalities. Some of them are very easy, uh, less than, greater than, fewer than, uh, less than or equal to. Those are pretty simple. But some of them take a little bit of thinking. Um, the phrase no more than is something you have to think about. If I want to eat no more than three Big Macs, that means I have to eat less than three Big Macs, less than or equal to three Big Macs, because I don't want to eat more than. So when you think about it, you've got to think about what no more means. It means not more. And if it's not more, it's going to be less. Um, likewise, no less than would mean not less than. And if it's not less than, that means it's got to be greater than or equal to. So take a few minutes and familiarize yourself with these words, and then we'll, we'll use them to write some inequalities. Here are a couple of examples of that. First one says 7 times a number is greater than 6 times that number minus 2. Well, 7 times a number is just 7n. That's multiplication. Is greater than, that's actually pretty easy. Greater than looks like that. So that's is greater than. And then 6 times that number is there. And then minus 2 comes from there. So 7n is greater than 6n minus 2. Now we have to solve it. Move the smaller coefficient. So n, so n is greater than negative 2. Next one, 4 times a number. I'm going to go 4x this time. xn doesn't matter. Is no more than. Well, here, here's the key now. No more than. If it's not more than, it must be less than or equal to, because it's not more than. So it's got to be the other possibilities. Uh, is no more than 3 times that number plus 8. Solving it, subtract 3x from both sides. 
you get x is less than or equal to 8. Here's some practice for us to write an inequality based on a situation. Alicia wants to buy a season pass to two theme parks. If one season pass costs $54.99 and Alicia has $100 to spend on passes, the second pass must cost no more than what amount? Now we'll get back to this no more than. First thing we have to do is figure out what variable we're talking about. What, what's our unknown? And our unknown is the cost of the second pass. And we've got to, we've got to label that with some variable. Um, you can use C for cost, P for pass. I'll just use X to stay you know, fairly generic from what most people do. Now let's build an inequality. If X is the cost of the second pass and 54.99 is the cost of the first one, we're going to put those together. So X plus 54.99, and that has to equal $100 if everything worked out. But this idea of no more than what amount, we don't want to go over that. We can't have more than that amount. So what is more, no more than? It means less than or equal to. So there's my inequality that I'll solve. So I'm going to subtract 54.99 from 100. So that means x has to be less than or equal to 4501. And that's dollars.